They did it. Brought her home and caught her. Did you see that? Did you hear that? Phenomenal. Yeah, on today, Sunday, October 13th, SpaceX made history once again as the Starship's Super Heavy, for the first time, was safely and soundly caught by the Mechazilla launch tower chopsticks on landing. Given that jaw-dropping sight, SpaceX's President Gwynne Shotwell revealed something that actually shocked NASA and the whole industry. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. Excitement is guaranteed. Success is possible. This is actually Elon Musk's favorite saying almost every time before the important test flights of Starship. It looks like a calming agent and shows an openness to failure. This time was not exceptional and it was just several hours ahead of the craziest aerospace event ever seen. Catching a 71 meter tall rocket booster in midair with Mechazilla chopsticks, Elon Musk tweeted that quote again. There is no doubt that Starship's historic test flight really got everyone excited due to its heat. And more importantly, success this time was no longer possible as Elon said, instead, it was a complete success. I screamed and cried of joy as I watched that Booster 12 return to the launch tower and with precision guidance nestled into the arms of the chopstick called Mechazilla by SpaceX. Yeah, it's so freaking awesome. Historic success on the first try. And I assure you that I am not alone in feeling this way. In fact, this is a common feeling of all space community. First and foremost, it's NASA Administrator, Bill Nelson. Congratulations to SpaceX on its successful booster catch and fifth Starship flight test today. As we prepare to go back to the moon under Artemis, continued testing will prepare us for the bold missions that lie ahead, including to the South Pole region of the moon and then on to Mars. Elon Musk quickly replied, thank you, sir. Looking forward to serving NASA in returning humanity to the moon. While Starship Flight 5 is an entirely SpaceX operation, it's being watched with keen interest by NASA and especially its Human Landing System Program Office. A variant of Starship will be used during the Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 missions, which will ferry astronauts to and from the surface of the moon. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell was left speechless. I don't know what to say. Remember, this woman played a key role in getting the FAA to approve Flight 5's launch date in October. Amid the context that the U.S. federal agency was still insisting on a November launch date, her voice at a congressional hearing had a significant influence. Furthermore, thanks to her good relationship with NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, the national agency was willing to participate as a launch licensee alongside the FAA. Thanks to that, SpaceX could outsmart the FAA to launch Starship as scheduled. Jared Isaacman, who partnered with SpaceX on the private manned spaceflight Polaris Dawn, sent his congratulations to SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. Big congrats, Elon Musk. You and your SpaceX team are delivering on an incredible vision. You have once again inspired the world and people everywhere are now dreaming of what is possible. Witnessing the Ship 30's splashdown attempt, he continued, Starship landing next to a data-gathering SpaceX buoy? If it wasn't clear before today, SpaceX truly operates on another level. Congrats to the entire team. You have given us yet another incredible glimpse into the future. It's no coincidence that Isaacman has a great interest in the Starship project. The mega rocket is planned to be a part of Polaris missions, whose first mission is Polaris Dawn. While few details have been released about the second, the third mission will be the first launch of SpaceX's Starship, with humans on board. As someone who has been keeping a close eye on SpaceX's ambitious activities, Canadian retired astronaut Chris Hadfield clearly doesn't want to miss out on this groundbreaking event. There was an enormous step forward in human capability today. Makes me even more excited for our collective future. Congratulations to all SpaceX. In another tweet, he also said, wow, phenomenal. Attaching two photos of Booster returning and being caught, physicist Alex, who has always kept up with SpaceX breaking news, expressed his amazement at this seemingly sci-fi technique. Engineering history was made today. We need to invent a new word that means beyond epic. Last but not least, guess who's coming up next? Well, she is Elon Musk's mother, May Musk. Unbelievable and nerve-wracking. Huge congrats. Everyone at SpaceX is so excited. So, how about you? Are you excited about this incredible booster catching attempt? Please comment on Flight 5 below. The Super Heavy Rocket and Starship spacecraft 
collectively called Starship, launched from Boca Chica at 7.25 a.m. The Super Heavy booster was successfully caught by two robotic arms minutes later. At T plus 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the flight, Flight 5 Starship Super Heavy rocket booster reignited its engines as it prepared to land. But it's a landing that no one had tried before, ever. Catching a 71-meter stainless steel structure with a mass of more than 250 tons, around T plus 649 seconds, the Flight 5 Super Heavy Booster 12 rocket was safely and soundly caught by the Mechazilla launch tower chopsticks on landing. This is a historic moment in spaceflight history. No government or private space agency has ever tried it before. Interestingly, SpaceX did it in the first attempt. The world was not expecting this outcome until the last moments. This operation is a key component of SpaceX's strategy for rapid reusability of rockets, aiming to streamline the process of refurbishment and relaunch. The booster was caught as it hovered near the launch tower, an achievement that has been described as a technological tour de force and a crucial step in developing fully reusable space vehicles. SpaceX's previous test flights had focused on splashdowns and landings, but this marked a new frontier in operational capability. In addition to the booster catch, the mission also aimed to send the Starship upper stage into space and return it for a planned splashdown in the Indian Ocean, approximately 65 minutes post-launch. This dual objective flight demonstrates SpaceX's commitment to refining its technology and enhancing its capabilities for future missions, including potential crewed flights to the Moon and Mars under NASA's Artemis program. The fifth flight test followed a successful June 6 flight test in which both the Starship craft and the Super Heavy booster landed at their intended locations. According to sources, the FAA has currently authorized SpaceX for Flight 6. Flight 6 hardware is mostly ready, and it could be as soon as late October. This fast movement of the FAA perhaps is attributed to SpaceX's tireless efforts to force the agency's bureaucracy to work much more efficiently. While the U.S. national election was coming closer, the tension between SpaceX and the Red Tape Party was hotter than ever. Most notably, Starship's important Flight 5 was ready to fly, but a surprising FAA announcement required them to wait until November probably after the U.S. national election, at the earliest to conduct the test. This is a move that SpaceX criticizes as not based on a new safety concern, but instead driven by superfluous environmental analysis. The most notable consideration listed by the FAA is the permit for operating Starship's water deluge system. The hardware has operated in Starbase for over a year, but now has recently become the target for fines, especially since the CNBC article in August saying SpaceX was discharging deluge water without TCEQ authorization and polluting the environment. SpaceX pushed back saying their system only uses clean drinking water and is monitored closely with no harmful contaminants found. America is being smothered by ever larger mountains of irrational regulations from ever more new agencies that serve no purpose apart from the aggrandizement of bureaucrats. Elon Musk wrote on X, as the pioneer in the wave of commercial spaceflight toward the ultimate goal, to explore other planets in our solar system and beyond, SpaceX is flying at an unprecedented pace as the world's most active launch services provider. SpaceX is also safely and reliably launching astronauts satellites, and other payloads on missions. To make multi-planetary life a reality, SpaceX has invested a lot of money, time, and effort into its greatest brainchild, Starship. Every flight of Starship has made tremendous progress and accomplished increasingly difficult test objectives, making the entire system more capable and more reliable. In a late September hearing, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell revealed that her firm invested more than $3 billion over the last few years into developing its facilities in the state for Starship, with just a billion in outlays in Texas this past year. Last year, Elon Musk also stated that SpaceX expected to spend around $2 billion on Starship development probably including $1 billion in Texas. He also added that he did not expect to have to raise funding to finance that work by investing a huge money into SpaceX's Starship facilities in Texas. Called Starbase, SpaceX aims to have a true gateway to Mars. Starbase has now become synonymous with the future of space exploration. The SpaceX executive shared that Starbase is a one-of-a-kind facility to manufacture, test, and launch the most advanced rockets on the planet there. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.